Hello everyone, my name is FPS Chasley and welcome to the Sonobu tutorial. I'm doing it in an MH60 just because uh, I've already started tutorials with the MH60, but the principle is the same for all buoy carrying platforms. That includes the platform you see before you, the Oliver Hazard Perry, and the not present P3 Orion. At least I don't think there's one on this mission. So the principle is you use your really powerful buoys to try and get a signal, and then you home in with a more special type kind of buoys, and then finally, once you got a pretty good idea, you throw in a pinger that is an active buoy, you send out some pings, get an actual fix on the enemy's position, and then you go ahead and sink it. So this is the same mission as the other tutorial, Intro to MH60, and uh, in this mission, this is the MH60 demo, we are searching for a Victor 3 submarine that's up around this way, so let's uh, head that way and begin our search, shall we? But before we get there, I got some stuff to go over, so let's go uh, check that out. Hopefully, we'll get there once this is done. So we have a whole host of Sono buoys available in this game. We have four different types, three of which have both shallow and deep variants. So, I'll start out with the BT, get that out of the way. This is the Bathiotherm Probe. You drop this, find out how deep the layer is, where the layer is. That'll help you out later on. Useful to know, in case someone might decide to run deep, might want to drop a Vlad deep. I'll get to that right now. So, we got these three types of Sonobuoys. We have a Vlad, a Diefar, and a Diecast. Um, you can look in the manual for the specific acronyms if you want. But uh, the fact that they go from a short name to a long name helps you. Because uh, you want to use the short one first, then the middle, then the long to narrow your search down. So it's pretty nifty. That's how I tend to re remember things like that as I look for patterns in it. So uh, the Diefar and Diecast have, as you can see, shallow and deep settings. So for shallow, you're looking at 90 feet or 30 meters. And deep, you're looking at like 400 feet or 130 meters or so. But for the Vlad... Shallow is at 600 feet, about 200 meters, or and then deep is at 1,200 feet, or about 400 meters. So, pretty big discrepancy there. The reason for that is that Vlad works better in a heavy sea state environment. And if you've seen my videos, to get beneath that sea state clutter, you got to go deep. We're talking at least 500, 600 feet, at least about 200 meters. So that's why that shallow is so deep. So if you're in a level with a layer that's kind of shallow... Um, the Vlad Shallow might not be something you want to need, especially if submarines are staying close towards the surface, so that's something to bear in mind. So you probably want to stay just about even on the Vlad Shallows and Defar Shallows, but uh, some things like geography and a good intuition can help you determine if there's going to be a layer or not. Alright, so Vlad. Let's start with the Vlad, the Vlad sensor here. So... Uh, the Vlad and Diefar are both passive sono buoys here, which means they only listen. The Diecast is passive, but is known for the active mode. So the Vlad is your most sensitive sensor here. This is what you're going to want to use to do your initial search. It has more omnidirectional hydrophones than the Diefar. An omnidirectional hydrophone listens on all bearings simultaneously, and all it will give you is a frequency readout. It's not going to tell you where it's coming from. It's just going to basically give you a signal strength and a frequency breakdown. So uh, the fact that it's like that gives it a higher sensitivity than the DIFAR. Um, but the DIFAR itself, once again, it can be shallower. And uh, since uh, you, if you want your VLADs for the long-range detection, you want to stock up on the VLADs, and then you can use the, the shallower DIFARs later on to potentially home in on your target. Uh, the diecast also have pass also has a passive mode, but it's very crappy compared to the Vlad. So, let's say for example that the Vlad can detect a contact at 8,000 yards. This is according to the manual. Then the diecast will only be able to detect that contact at 3,000 yards. That's just a comparison of the strength of the sensors there. Um, I think I may I think I already mentioned this, but the maximum range you can detect a contact with a sonobuoy is. 7 nautical miles or 14,000 yards, no matter what in this game. What are we doing on ETA? About halfway there, good. Alright, so that's a, that's your overview of the Stone of Buoys there. 
So uh, that's about it. There is one more Sona buoy. It's called a low far. Um, you cannot deploy it. It is omnidirectional only. Can only be deployed if you make a mission basically with low fars already in it. So back to Vlad's and die fars. Um, they also have directional sensors, which means you can change the input mode on them to directional, and uh, you can actually see what bearing a contact is on versus just uh, knowing that something is there, basically. But uh, yeah, that concludes my overview of the Sona buoys here, so let's get up to the target area. Alright, since this water is indeed shallower than a Vlad Shallow, I'm not sure if a Vlad Shallow will work here. I will test it out, um, we'll see if it'll work, but if not, I'm just going to go around and drop some die fars. And uh, I already know where the sub is, the point of this is not for me to show off how to find a sub, the point is to show how to use the Sona buoy. so I'll meet you back once I have dropped all these Sona buoys. Buoy away. Waypoint reached. Buoy away. Waypoint reached. Buoy away. Waypoint reached. Buoy away. Alrighty, so we got all of our buoys out here. The two die fars have gone hot, but the Vlad hasn't, leading me to believe that the Vlad will not work in these conditions. So let's head on over to our gram display. Um, we already got stuff up for some reason. It's interesting. I don't have the auto crew on. <laughs> Alright, so we got channel 2, channel 6, and channel 7. Uh, let me go ahead and check out what channel 5 is doing. I don't think the Vlad will work in these shallow waters here. Uh, yeah, see, we're not getting anything on the Vlad. And we should be. The Vlad is more sensitive than the dive far, so it looks like Vlads will not work when their deployed depth is deeper than the, the waters around here. So we'll go to Sonobuoy 6, 7, and 8. I'm just going to get out of the way of Sonobuoy 8 here so we can see it. Uh, Sonobuoy 8 should be going... Uh, should be coming hot any second now. So, as you notice, we only have four displays here. It makes it kind of hard to work. Um, but, uh, just the name of the game here. So, channel five. Yeah, get out of here. We can scuttle that then. So, let us go to channel eight. We'll just, uh, be looking there. Channel eight then. All right, so this is the default mode. This is the Omni screen. So you'll see there's two numbers that are moving at the top right there as I'm panning my mouse around. The first number is the time in seconds. It goes from 0 to 60 seconds. And then the second number is the frequency of the signal you're seeing. So we have these really bright signals. That's just uh, this guy over here. This dude making a whole hell of a lot of noise with his four prop propeller thing, four blade propeller. But then over here we have this little faint contact here. So what you want to do is uh, if you're looking for a Russian submarine, since all Russian submarines start with frequency 50, let me rephrase that. Since no American submarines start with frequency 50, your first thing you want to do is set this to 50 here. These are frequency alerts. You set these to any frequency you want. If it detects it, it'll be like frequency alert. Frequency See if it, uh, alert. Frequency alert. there you go. It's a pretty nifty feature there, so... All you have to do is drop sonar buoys and put them up and then listen for the frequency alert, basically. So we'll turn that off so we don't freak out too much. So uh, here you can go ahead and uh, what you can do, can't mark on the Omni screen it looks like. I always change to the directional screen. So we got them on three buoys here, six, seven, and eight, all the buoys I dropped. So you can get a triangulation with two buoys, but it helps to have another buoy just to... Uh, really make sure. I'll show you why in a second here. So uh, let's go ahead and bring up... Let's do channel 6 and channel 7 here. So I'm going to put number 1 on the channel 6. We'll put number 3. I'll show you why. Number 3 to channel 7, which it already is. And let's go ahead and take this to 0. And then we'll put 2 to 0 as well. Alright, so the reason I did that... Go to 0. The reason I did that is because once you switch it to directional mode, all of a sudden it takes up two grams instead of one. So that's the drawback to using directional. I think it's purely for a gameplay perspective kind of thing to eat, to like balance it out. So 
we got our 50 right here. If you look in the top right, now we have the first number is now bearing and the second number is still frequency. Um, so you can highlight over this contact here and go to the library and it's going to tell you Victor 3. So we'll go ahead and mark that bad boy here. And let's go down to directional here and we'll give him a mark as well. Alright, so we have what looks like a pretty good triangulation here. But uh, it's more pronounced when the sonar buoys are closer together so that these lines would be a little more... Here, we can I can show it off with the other one here. This other guy will show it clearly. Or a lot uh, much better than this one. So as you can see here, look. The guy is right there, but our triangulation is stipulating that it would be about there. So if you could bring in another buoy over here, that would really just hone down on where that guy would be. That's why you use the uh, triangulation. So uh, since the angle here is about 90, you can say with pretty good confidence that the sub is actually going to be right there. There isn't much discrepancy in it. Let's just go ahead and bring up buoy 8 and uh, get that third line there and get that triangulation going. Uh, mode, directional. I always switch to directional. And uh, yeah, there you go. So we got our little triangulation right there. What it'll give you here is this little triangle. And uh, there's a good probability that he's inside that triangle there. He's probably just within this vicinity, but there's a good probability he's inside that little triangle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head this way. And we're going to drop a die cast buoy and ping this dude. So I'll see you in a sec. Alrighty, now we got our die cast out there. We'll wait for him to come hot. Um, let's get take number three here and put this down to zero because the active sono buoy will use up three displays pretty much rendering any other sono buoy monitoring useless so got to be on your game with the helo sono buoy to do anything at all all right let's uh get this up to nine here uh, da -da -da -da. They have to. It, they don't come hot instantly. They gotta deploy first. It takes a little while for those Vlads because they gotta go deep. So it may not have technically been fully deployed yet. But if it was touching the ocean, but no, I was flying around for a good while. It doesn't work when it's shallower than its maximum depth. So these two buoys down here are also hot. They're probably picking up this guy, not the Victor. So is nine ready to go yet? Not yet. All right, nine's ready to go. Uh, we're getting a very strong signal on the Victor here because nine's right on top of him, basically. <laughs> so let's go ahead and switch this to that'll take it to your directional. And then I'm not going to bother marking him on there. It's just going to be another line cluttering us up. Let me uh, just drop these two bad boys here. Create this clutter. So let's go and let's ping. Uh, go over here and click the X Mit button. There you go. There's your contact right there. This will ping continuously until you unclick xmit so there's our sub right there and uh there's your basic sona buoy lesson ladies and germs i hope you enjoyed this video see you guys later and uh i won't be engaging this time no that'll be a separate video separate video for engaging so thanks for watching guys if you want to see more complex examples let me know i'll try and think of some this is just a basic example so see you guys later I'm FPS Chesley. Thanks for watching.